guys and welcome back this is chosen architect today we're jumping back into some more fdb skies and i hope you guys are ready for some digital storage upgrades hopefully you guys are ready so today welcome back my goal today hopefully is to get into refined storage i want to make this my refined storage hub uh, but to do that well we're gonna have to get into a lot of different things including applied energistic stuff uh, so over here, I have some of the things I guess getting started would be the best thing to work towards. Getting ourselves fluid cr uh, crystals is going to be a must, but we can actually just buy them off of villagers if we get lucky. It is pretty expensive, five emeralds for four, uh, but we can also buy full-blown surface quartz as well. Um, so we're going to need to get into a little bit of power using our power here. Um, as you can see, professions, we can actually take a look at this and so we can see every little thing that uh, these guys, <laughs> I love the computer science, that these guys uh, can use as a workstation. And uh, the Shady Wizard uh, is a pretty cool one. It offers quite a few different things, but this is one of the workstations. So I think I have a villager laying around in here. Uh, yeah, just some, just a regular standard villager. Um, and I wanna make a breeder because it seems like we're gonna be needing a lot of villagers uh, as we move on. Uh, so to make this, we're going to need some glass panes and we are going to need ourselves another bed. Good old Minecraft bed. There we go. Uh, so the breeder is going to be kind of nice. We can uh, supply this with uh, materials, I believe like carrots and so on and so forth. We can supply it with. We have like tons of bone mill. Um, so seeds, I think we have carrot seeds We have tomato seeds. Wheat actually is a pretty good one. Uh, we can just use wheat, because we're going to need the seeds anyway, so I'll just bone mill some wheat. And let's get these villagers going. And we should be able to use our time in the bottle, which already has four hours in it. As you can see, I did spend a lot of time working on our setups over here. Um, so I should be able to click these guys in. And there we go. And then we have a food, out, uh, food input here, and then our output should be our villagers. Uh, now there's another thing with easy villagers that allows us to actually grow our villagers, and that's an incubator. Uh, so we should be able to use this as well to take our baby villagers and make them grown. So I just crafted up the charger and I have a full grown villager here that came out of our breeder. And all I gotta do is put the villager in here with the charger and bam, we're ready to go. So it does seem like we can get Sirtis Quartz crystals right off the bat. And we do have Sirtis Quartz over here, so we don't have to worry about uh, just jumping into that process. So emeralds let's go ahead and get to spinning some emeralds apparently uh so this will get it leveled up and then we have sky stone looks like some silicon for that for an emerald i don't really want to do that so i'll just purchase more of this seems to be a good offer there and there we go there's the flux crystal that i'm going to be needing that's pretty helpful getting started with that um so there's one of the main parts down and then we also have Surge Quartz Crystals as well. Uh, now, these guys are supposed to also sell the presses. So I'm assuming once we have enough of the materials, we should be able to also buy the presses. So I'm going to buy the rest of this because it's actually used for making the cables as well. Ah, so here's an inscribe. So a calculation press and an engineering press. And I'm hoping that the other two presses show up in the higher tiers. Best way to level up is of course buy the highest tier of items. And in this case, we just get slime balls, which uh, is this, this guy's at master. So I'm hoping that uh, I, I guess, guess what we'll have to do is we'll take this guy out of here. And this is set to that researcher. Uh, but when we get another one, We'll have to level another one up and hopefully we'll be able to get the proper press. Actually, it seems like we can just jump right in without needing the villager to give us that. Uh, with a smithing table, we can just combine paper and silicon and get the press that we need. So this will be perfect. So we'll just combine this and this. And there we go. We have ourselves the inscriber or the silicon press. Now, we need this for everything with refined storage because in refined storage, to make all of the basic components, which is going to be like for our uh, raw basic processor, improved and so on and so forth. The main thing we need is that printed silicon. And so we're gonna have to use an inscriber or advanced inscriber, which is probably gonna be the best thing to get set up. 
uh, because this will allow us to automate it a lot easier and uh, just send the items and then get it back out. So here's the moment of truth. Will this be able to be powered by our generator that we already have over here? And it seems like it, it is. It is actually being powered, uh, which is really nice. So we do have an engineering processor, uh, and this is going to be really great because this will allow us to immediately upgrade. And so we should be able to just give this the press and give it a diamond. And we are going to be using this to make the advanced it's inscriber from AE. So I have to make these presses, um, and which means I'm going to need by default two of the silicon. So it's just a matter of just doing these by hand for right now. And it'll get a little bit easier once we have the main machine going. Now with this basically done, I can go ahead and put a uh, Certus Crystal in here to make it charge. So if you're getting Applied Energy 6, this is going to be handy. But I did this just to complete the quest line here. And we get all of these nice items. Of course, we used a different solution for this. Now we're going the uh, we're going the refined storage route. You can totally go Applied Energistics. I would say both of these mods are very, very similar uh, at this time. The only thing with Applied Energistics is it's a little bit more tedium and uh, you're going to have to deal with channels, which uh, can get kind of confusing. Um, for me, I'm going to go with ref refined storage. I find that it is a very simplistic thing, can do just about everything that you want it to do and uh, gets the job done really, really well. And also doesn't take up a lot of space, which I enjoy hiding things. And so with refined storage being nice and compact uh, compared to applied energistics, it makes for much prettier builds. So with the advanced inscriber, this should be a little bit easier. And I think this could hook up. Yeah, it still runs off the same power and everything. But what I can do is I can put this in here and I can put full stacks worth of items in here. And then we have speed upgrades that we can use. So this is a, a, a lot more functional as far as input and output goes. Uh, it's way easier to handle. Now, of course, for refined storage, we're going to be dealing with these raw processors. I had to make some of the binding very simple to put together, but they do all require that printed silicon. So that's why we went ahead and jumped through those hoops. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these made up. I went ahead and just made eight of each for now. This should be enough to get us sort of jump started into the basics, right? A controller. We're also going to need ourselves a disk drive. And that's really it. So a controller, disk drive, and then a crafting grid. Other than that, we're pretty much ready to go. And uh, to make the cables and such, which we can go ahead and do now, uh, those are going to require those flux crystals. So we're really going to have to keep our heads, uh, heads up for this. And maybe down the road, we might have a setup where we have an automatic solution for this. Uh, technically, we can set up an auto trader. So down the road, it might be worthwhile uh, to get this trader all the way down uh, to one emerald apiece, which you can do with a converter, which is actually built into Easy Villagers as well. So with all of our stuff set up, let's go ahead and get this placed in. So I went ahead and made another combustion generator, very simple machine. That's gonna give us power to our controller. Controller will set here, and then we can have our crafting grid underneath that. And then underneath this, leaving space for some cables and all that fun stuff which I actually might want to put some cables in. Uh, we put a cable right there and we can place our disk drive in. Uh, now, as soon as we give this some coal, things should start running and uh, we'll definitely have access to coal throughout this playthrough as it's pretty much infinite. So it is generating some power. It doesn't generate a whole lot. This thing doesn't uh, about 80 RF per tick. Probably I'm assuming that's probably what the generation rate is. Um, and we're using four FE per tick, so using basically nothing. This is up and running, nice and glowy. However, we don't have any drive. So this is where I've got to focus on making all of the storage disks that we're going to be using. So right now I'm working towards a 64K drive. I think I have the ability easily to make this. It's just a matter of just uh, grinding out the resources. So 64K drive, very, very simple. Um, we kind of start off with, uh, I believe it's, we need to craft 27 1k parts. So I have those crafted next. We'll be crafting these down into the 4k. Uh, so the 4k, we're going to need nine of those, which means nine times four 36. Um, and then we're going to have to take the 4k and craft that down. We're going to need 12 improved processors, which I have working right now. And then we just need four for the final four of the advance and then a little bit of redstone along the way. Very, very simple. I already have all these. I'm just sort of waiting for my basic processors to sort of finish up. 
and then I should be able to craft this all up. So while I'm working on this, I was thinking, what are you guys, like what, what are you guys gonna go for? Are you guys gonna go for refined storage? Or are you guys gonna go for applied energistics? Uh, and, and let me know why, like what, what's your reasoning why? Cause I kind of have my ways, but I would love to hear what you guys have to say down in the comments below. So let's go with that 64K drive. I'm pretty sure I have everything ready to go. Should be nine of these, right? Nine. And then we craft those into 16K storage drives. And uh, these just need to be balanced out, right? There we go. There's three. And last but not least, our 64K storage component. Uh, and we should be able to supply this with a housing. And we just combine these two things together. And there we go. We have a 64K drive ready to store all of our things and we can get out of this integrated dynamics early game storage solution. So in just like that, I have all of that moved over into our digital storage, which is very nice. Now, uh, let's take a look inside this. I did go ahead and upgrade. I added uh, two more water wheels and I have them lined here. Uh, and these are all being powered and they're all powering this single large cog, which can actually uh, almost double the speed that these guys can sieve. Uh, just by attaching it to the side. So it works uh, like a single gear ratio up, like acts like a small cog wheel, which is really nice. Uh, I just wanted to show that real quick and uh, show you that this is going significantly faster than it was. Now I'm about to start running some cables and I think it's about time to talk about the shrink mod. Uh, this is the personal shrinking device from the shrink mod. It is a fantastic device for running cables. Um, however, we do need to charge it and I don't know if this will charge it, so we need to find a way, because uh, I don't think it will work on its own. So we're gonna need some sort of charger. And now this is where knowledge of your quest book is really helpful. So we need to actually make a turn-in screen uh, because we can get a free device for doing basically nothing, right? Uh, just uploading a little bit of our power uh, to this task screen. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take our task screen and we do get another task screen in return, but we need to just send 10,000 power and we'll get a battery and some flux ducts. Now the battery is what I'm hoping for. Uh, it's from Cyclic. I could craft one, but uh, it's kind of nice to be able to show this. So let's go ahead and set up our task screen. I think if I place it here, that's the front, I think. And we'll open this up and uh, we need to find the task. And that is going to be 10K. And then we'll be able, we should be able to complete this. Looks like we can change some default things to it. Ooh, it has the ability for us to reskin it and everything. That's kind of cool. So let's go ahead and complete that. And look at that, it's already done because this holds a pretty large buffer. Uh, and with that being done, we get ourselves a battery and a cable. Uh, so this battery, let's go ahead and break this screen because we can use it later. Let's go ahead and put this battery on here. And this has a charging slot. So I can put this in here and as you can see, it now charges some things up. Very, very handy. Now with that uh, battery that we just got, let me show you how to use that if you're may maybe struggling uh, because it is a little confusing on the interface. Now we have a combustion generator, I have it set here, that's feeding into this automatically, but we want to send the power to this. At the moment, this is currently draining. So to send the power, we need to select down but there's more than that. We actually have to turn this to exporting power. Um, and what that's going to do is it's still going to receive power from up here, but it's going to allow it to actually send the power out, which is what we want it to do. And so now we have this nice storage buffer of like 6.4 million RF in a single storage unit. You kind of love cyclic. Also, it is so nice to see cables back again. Oh my gosh, from thermal. How cool is that to see these cables back? Uh, I can't wait until we get item ducks. That's that's what I'm interested in. Uh, but for now, let's learn about this personal shrinking device. So the personal shrinking device allows us to shrink ourselves. So we can go ahead and scale this down. This is sort of a reference or would be a reference. But if we hold shift, <laughs> we can now shrink ourselves down to a very small size and shift click to get ourselves back. And we can kind of choose in the interface how big we want. If we want to go half size, there we are. Now we're half size and we're not super, super tiny. Um, and this allows us to fit into little block spaces. 
Um, so this area right here is leading into my mob farm and I don't really want that to happen. I don't want my mob farm to be in the way of this. So what I should be able to do is grab some stone and fill that back in and I should be able to walk through it easily. So we'll set this here and I'm trying to get cable routed over here. So I should be able to just continue my way through a single block gap and there we go. We have our cables. You can see I'm walking right underneath this block and I fit perfectly. Uh, it's just a fantastic mod. I love the shrink mod. Now, the reason I wanted to be able to shrink and place down cables is because I'm gonna be hooking into an external storage. Uh, so this external storage is going to hook into our controller over here, giving us access from a refined storage network all the way over here, right? So we hook this in, and according to the wiki, our priority kind of works in a weird way. I'm gonna work on this and make sure, but if we set this at a higher number, it will be a higher priority. Whereas in some situations with some other mods, the lower the number is the higher the priority. But in this case, I'm pretty sure one makes it a higher priority than base zero, which is what our current storage is set to. So let's go ahead and plug this in and see if that's true. Um, we are gonna need to probably shrink ourselves. I'm um, just trying to be careful around this because I don't want to fall off the edge. Uh, but once we get right over here, let's shrink. And we'll continue to run this all the way through. Let's drop this down and run this underneath our base. Nice and hidden. Can't see anything else. So there we go. Actually, let's go ahead and make this so I can get out of here by placing it here. And just like that we should be able to crawl our way out from here. Nice, once this is all hooked up, we should be able to see our storage in there. So inside here, we should now see all of our iron. You can see right there, there's 367. If I pull that out, uh, it should be 367. And let's check over here. I know it's gonna go up a little bit, but this will be a way to definitely test and make sure. We need to find iron on our list. So there, yeah, it's really hard to see, 3,000 of. Maybe there's 59. Let's take a look at our crystals here. There's 59. We pull this out, and when we put it back in, we want it to put back into this storage. Right now, there's zero. And so we'll, we'll be able to tell. If we put this in and it goes back into here, then we know our priority is set right. Perfect. Now, another useful thing I can make is an exporter. And this is gonna be pretty cool because we can go ahead and simply automate our setup. Uh, so cable, and let's automate our coal. So now that we have this hooked into our coal production, it should be pretty easy to say, hey, make sure to always send coal to this generator. I'm gonna place this on the back so we're not always staring at it, get it hooked in, and then we'll say, make sure to put coal in here, and that should start to keep this filled with coal at all times. Um, and so that will guarantee that we have our power, at least what power this generates until we start to overcome that with uh, the more things we add to our refined storage system. But for now, it should definitely maintain its power source. So now at this point, I think we can go ahead and get started with the wireless part of refined storage. Um, I wanna get this hooked up so that way I have access to it around my base and not just at the central location of my base. That'll make building easier. That'll make uh, getting access to all of our other builds that we're planning on doing with our uh, mods and stuff, I think that's gonna be fantastic. So, wireless universal grid. What we're gonna need is a wireless grid and a wireless uh, a wireless fluid grid and a wireless grid. Now, inside of refined storage, there's not actually a crafting grid built in, unfortunately. So we are kind of left in this situation where, well, we need to have some sort of craft crafting grid added to the pack. And I think that this right here, this universal grid, works that way. Um, now, this is a custom recipe because normally there would be a crafting grid from another mod added here. But in this case, it's all applied energistic stuff. So we are going to need these cells to make this, which requires this Fluix dust. You can take the Fluix crystals uh, that you have uh, from the villagers, and I can go ahead and uh, drop it in here. And it's going to crush that down into powder. So I'm going to need... A few more emeralds. I'm going to have to get my villagers back out. Or traders, as they're called. And I'm going to have to trade for more. Because it's going to take... It's going to take a little bit to get this done. 
from the looks of it. So I think now at this point, I have everything I'm gonna need. We just need to craft out a few of these pearls. Uh, actually, I think the this one requires a pearl as well. Oh, it even it's even gonna require more. Oh my gosh. So um, it's just so weird jumping back and forth between refined storage and applied energistic stuff. Uh, so let me buy out more of those. And then we put this together. So it's more ender pearls. And then this requires the dust. I think this is just gonna use fluix dust for the quartz fiber cable. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty easy to craft all in all, um, but we get everything put together and hopefully this grid works. So this is the grid. It's using the grid and that, and it, I hope it has a crafting grid built in. Otherwise, that will be frustrating. So uh, the way we charge it, same way we've charged everything else. Let's put it over here. Get that nice and charged up. Shift right click on the controller to link it. And it says no wireless transmitter in range because we have yet to make the transmitter. Um, so the wireless transmitter should require a little bit of ender pearls. Uh, let's pop into refined storage. So this is really, this is a really simple machine to make. Um, so I'm gonna make all of the components for that. And watch this, by the way. We put this in here. I can turn this a little bit faster. Boop, already done. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why the time in the bottle is really nice. You can see I already have five hours in this thing. It builds up quick. It, before you know it, you're going to have more time than you know what to do with. So there's our wireless transmitter. And then we also will need some range upgrade cards because by default, the range is just not that great. So uh, we'll need more of the quartz refined. And then there we go. Let's make four of them. Uh, we do have more ender pearls, by the way. This is how I'm getting down to the bottom area. We have plenty of ender pearls. I plan on next episode getting the storage set up for this and even setting up some sort of contraption with maybe create to auto kill these mobs. So that way we can, of course, harvest and turn it off when we need. But we also need a way to harvest this grass to keep them spawning. And we should be able to use the same collection method and, and get everything filtered. It'll be pretty neat. I have some plans. I have some plans. So ender pearls, boop, boop. There we go. And we have it done now. Um, I just need to tap into a line down here. Um, and I'll just put it on the side. That should work just fine. No problem. And uh, actually, I'll put it on the bottom. Oh, that's right. We have this area set out, so we can't do that. Let's just put it on the side, like I said. There we go. Um, and then in this, we can put our range upgrades. Let's put it at 48 blocks. That's plenty for our base for now. It doesn't extend out, you know, super far, but it's enough to get the job done. Um, now... There is an infinity booster in here that would give us infinite range. Now, let's take a look at this. So, by default, it's a regular grid, uh, but we're supposed to be able to change this, and there it is. There is the universal grid for crafting. That's what we're using the most. This thing, oh, that is nice. So, if you were looking for the grid for refined storage, a wireless version, it's built in. It's in here. It's just not that clear or apparent. Now, just like all other grids, like some uh, some of the add-ons I've exp I've played around with, you can put this in your Kuro slot. Now, keep in mind, keep in mind, this is going in your Kuro slot. It can go in any slot when it says Kuro um, or Kuro. But you have a hotkey you can define. And I like to set mine to Control E. Uh, so I had to change that in the key binds. But that makes it so that way I can be anywhere, hit Control E, and I can open my grid and, of course, E to open it normally. It's just really convenient to keep your hot bar nice and clean so you can keep all of your other stuff in there. So with that, we now have our storage up and running. And I tell you what, things are really going to start blowing up from this point. Uh, now that we have this done, building is going to be so much easier. Getting into every other mod is going to be so much easier. I love to have a centralized storage because there's just so many items that you have to keep up with in modded Minecraft. Regular vanilla Minecraft, yes, chests are super easy to sort. But in modded, it is just a chaotic uh, thing to manage. So now that we have our digital storage, and I would say probably one of the best digital storage mods out there, we are fit and ready to go. So guys, if you would, click that subscribe button if you enjoyed today's video and give it a huge thumbs up. I would much appreciate. And I think at this point, it is time to thank the supporter of today's video. And that, my friends, is going to be a huge thanks. If I could spell it, thanks. Going out to D Dog. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way. Over on the Discord, becoming a Discord premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic weekend, holiday weekend at the time of this recording. And of course, 
as always, guys, thanks for watching. So did you guys hear about the creeper that was at the party? Yeah, it was a blast. <laughs>